So the data says a family of seven members go for a picnic in a Scorpio, right? So total seven members in the family. There are two couples in the family, right? So two couples and three are independent members. Then each member has a coded name B1 to B7, right? So B1, B2, B3 are the names. Only two members can sit in the front row as well as in the back row of the car and the rest can sit in the middle row. See only two members, see two members can sit in the front row and then two members can sit in the back row and the rest can sit in the middle row. So out of seven, if two sit in the front row, two in the back row, then rest would be three and those three can sit in the middle row. All right. Then it says not more than two males or females can sit in the same row or column. See, understand we are going to arrange these seven persons in a car in, in Scorpio. So basically it's not just about rows. We are not arranging them in a straight line. It's not a row. It's a combination of rows and columns. So not more than two males or females can sit in the same row or same column. So, so if you try to visualize the top view of the arrangement, what happens? So this is the car. Let us assume. I mean, uh, if, you, if you look at the top view, there is a driver seat and then there is a co-passenger with the driver, right? So these are the two seats. Then the middle row, middle row will have three seats and then the back row will have two seats. That's what it says, right? Two members can sit in the front row. So this is the front row, this is the back row and three members in the, the rest of the members, which is three in the middle row. So this is how the arrangement would look like, right? This is like a H. If you see a column, second column, and then there is a intersecting line. So it's like H. I mean, the positions there would look like H. You're getting it? This is the only way it can be arranged. There's no other possibility there. Okay. So I'll just uh, give some spacing, right? Space it out properly so that it's easier to fill, right? So two seats in the front row, three in the middle row, and two in the back row. Okay. So it says not more than two males or females can sit in the same row or same column. So if you look at the front row, there cannot be more than two males or two females. Of course, there are only two seats. So no chance that there can be more than two males there. But if you look at the middle row, there are three seats. So all three cannot be males or all three can be females, right? Not more than two are allowed. So maximum two males or two females, right? Now back row anyway, there are only two seats. So either two males or two females or one male or one male and one female would come. But if you look at the columns now, see there are two columns also. First column has got three seats, second column, I mean, has also got three seats. So even in these columns, maximum two males or two females, right? There cannot be more than two males or more than two females. Right? So you need to just keep all these conditions in mind. Otherwise it would be, I mean, that's what will help us, uh, you know, close out all the possibilities and zero into the one which actually fits there. Okay. Then look at the next part that the daughter-in-law is the drive is the dri is driving the car, right? Daughter-in-law. So in this, you know, family of seven members, there's a daughter-in-law who is driving the car, right? So let's assume this is a driver's seat. I mean, assuming that it's a right-hand drive, like in our country, this is a driver's seat. So daughter-in-law is sitting there. But who's the daughter-in-law is not clear to us. B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, any one of these. Then one couple is seated in the same column. One couple is seated in the same column means what, right? Same column. So couple will either come here or here or here or here. There are four possibilities, right? Column. So couple can take these two seats or these two or these two or these two, right? Then the granddaughter sits on the immediate left of the grandmother. Granddaughter sits on the immediate left of the grandmother. So basically in this family, there is uh, there are there are three generations we can say, right? Clearly three generations. The granddaughter would sit immediately on the left of grandmother. So, so if here we have the grandmother seated somewhere, the granddaughter would be immediately on the left side. So these are two consecutive persons, right? Granddaughter on the immediate left of grandmother. Okay. Now look at the point that B2 is the father of B5. Let's, let's try and draw the family tree. B2 is the father of B5. So B2 is the father male person of B5. What's the gender of B5? Not known to us, right? B5 can be male or female. Both are possible. So usually the confusion is when you say B2 is the father of B5, the immediate reaction is B5 is the son of B2. But how do you know it is the son? So gender is not very clear there, right? So B2 is the father of B5. B2 is a male person. B5 gender is not known. Then B7 has two sons and a daughter. So try to draw this. B7 has two sons and a daughter. Now since B7 is not available here, we'll try to take it separately, right? B7, let's say B7 has two sons and a daughter. So basically three children, two sons and a daughter. So this is one son, the second son and a daughter. I mean, we're just marking the gender there, right? Names are not known to us, right? 
So two will be male and uh, one child will be female, right? B7 has two sons and one daughter. B6 sits in the back row. B6 sits in the back row. Now, which is the back row? This is the back row. So B6 has to come here. So let's let's plot it. We will say that B6 would come here, right? B6 will come in the back row. B6 has to come in the back row. So either this sit or this sit. Then B2 and B4 don't sit in the front row. B2 and B4 don't sit in the front row. The front row is this one. B2 and B4 will not sit here. Understand, B2 or B4 will not be seated in the front row. B6 will definitely be seated in the back row. All right? So try to pictorially represent it always. It becomes easier when you are trying to fill the gaps. You are able to follow. B2 and B4 do not sit in the front row. So there is a cross mark here. Meaning these two cannot come here. And B6 can actually sit in the back row. Next point says B3 is married to B2. Now we already have B2 here. So B3 is married to B2. So let's let's plot it. B3 is married to B2. You know right. Uh, I mean uh, if you if you look at the blood relations video of talent sprint. You would know that we always represent married couples using a double headed arrow. So B3 and B2 has a double headed arrow in between. Which means this is a married couple. And since B2 is the father. Obviously B3 will be the mother. As in if B2 is husband. B3 has to be wife. So husband and wife couple. B3 is married to B2. B1 is the father of B6. B1 is the father of B6. Now what do you do this? B1 is the father of B6. B1 is the father of B6. We, we have neither B1 nor B6 in the plot so far. Right? We, we, see, we don't have B1 or B6 in the plot so far. But clearly it says B1 is the father of B6. See, so understand. This is a very, very important statement. If you can... You know, if you can realize the hidden points in this statement, half of the problem is done. B1 is the father of B6 means what? B1 is a part of those two married couples. See, there are only two married couples. Remember, two couples. We have already got the first couple. B2, B3 is the first couple. B2, B3 is the first couple. Yes or no? There are only two couples in the family. So, first couple is B2 and B3. Now, and, and we know that B7, where is that? B7 has two sons and a daughter. So, B7 has two sons and daughter. So, because B7 has... Children, obviously B7 is also married. I mean, it will be a part of the couple, right? B7 has two sons and a daughter. Now the statement says B1 is the father of B6. So if B1 is a father, definitely B1 is also a part of those two couples. So only the couple is available here. Two persons are available here. The third person is B7. And now B1 is the father of B6. So clearly B1 has to be married to B7 only. There is no other possibility. Are you able to follow? B1 is the father of B6. The only choice is B1 has to be married to B7 and then he will become the father of B6. Because B1 is a part of that married couple. B7 is also a part of married couple. The other married couple is B2 and B3. So B7 and B1 have to be connected. And since B1 is the father, we know that he is a male person. So B7 will be female. So husband and wife couple, the second couple. And B1 is the father of B6. So one of the sons is B6. One of the sons is B6. So B1 son. See, we already knew that B7 has got two sons and a daughter. So one son is B6. B7 son and B1 son will be same, right? Couple, that's a couple. So B1 is the father of B6. Now, both the brothers sit in the same column. You have to remember this point that both the brothers sit in the same column. Both the brothers. See, if you look at the diagram here, family diagram, the only two brothers are these two persons here. You getting it? These two are brothers. The two sons of B1 and B7. They are the only two brothers, right? And the last point says B4 is the daughter of B1. B4 is the daughter of B1. B1 is already available here. B4 is the daughter. So daughter is this female child, right? B4 is the daughter of B1. You get it? Daughter of B1. So if you observe, all the seven persons have been plotted here, but in two different parts. B2, B3, B5 is one part of the tree. B1, B7, B6, B4 is the other part. But still there is a branch which is open. So obviously with this open branch, we have to connect these two parts. Yes or no? If there is an 8 person, probably that 8 person would come here. But there are only 7 persons. We already have the 4 here and the remaining 3 in this, this part of the diagram. So the connection for these 2 will be through this part. This open branch. And the only possibility is that this son of B1 and B7, this, this child of B1 and B7, who is a male child, has to be B2. It has to be B2. It, it completes the family tree. You're getting it. B2 has to be the child here. So let, let us connect it. There's, there's no other possibility. See, B3 cannot come. Why can't B3 come here? B3, B3 come. B3 is a female person. And we know that this place is left, I mean, you know, has been reserved for a male person. So B3 cannot come. And can B5 come? No, B5 cannot come. B5 cannot come here. Why? 
Why? See, the reason why B5 cannot come here is because of this statement which says grandmother and granddaughter. There was some statement using grandmother and granddaughter, right? See, we know that there are three generations in this family. If you say B5 comes here, if B5 is taken here, what happens? B3 and B2 will go to the generation above, which already has B1 and B7. So there are two couples in the same generation and then there are three children. So what happens? Only two generations. But we know that we need three generations because grandmother and granddaughter was mentioned. So clearly B5 cannot come. So if B5 cannot come and if B1, uh, B3 cannot come, the only choice is B2 has to come there. Yes or no? So this person is B2. And we know that B2's child is B5. So I'll just clear this part and connect B3. Right? B3 is married to B2. You getting it? Just moving it. So that the, there is only one tree that we have. So this completes the family tree there. This completes the family tree. So what happens? B7 and B1 in the top generation, which is a married couple. Then the other married couple is B3 and B2. The other children of uh, B7 and B1 are B6 and B4. And B3 and B2 has a child, B5. Now, the only gender that is not known here, the only gender that is not known here is of B5. At least so far, which is not known is B5. But remember, we know that there is a granddaughter in the family. And the only grandchild in the family here is B5. So obviously, B5 has to be the granddaughter. Yes or no? There was a mention of granddaughter. So B5 has to be the granddaughter, which means female. B5 is female. So now all the genders are known to us. Right? We know all the persons, the family tree, complete family tree, and the genders. And what is left out is arrangement part. So let's start the arrangement. I think the obvious point that we knew was the daughter in law is driving the car. Remember, the daughter in law is driving the car. Now, who is the daughter in law? B3 is the daughter in law. So B3 is driving the car. B3 is driving the car. Right? Also mark the gender here, female, because we know that not more than two persons can come in the same, uh, not more than two males or two females can come in the same row or same column. All right. So B3 would come there. Okay. Now what else is obvious? The other obvious point is that B6 has to come in the back row. But there are two seats in the back row. So which seat is occupied by B6? It's not very clear. So we'll do one thing. To avoid the confusion, let us take both the possible cases. See, daughter-in-law drives the car is fixed. Now the other case would be I mean, same, daughter-in-law drives the car. Let us draw whatever is fixed first. Right. Now, what we are trying to do here is that we know B6, B6 will come in the back row. So, we have taken two cases. We will take B6 in this seat in one case and B6 in this seat in the, in the other seat in the second case. Are you able to follow? There are two possible positions for B6. We have considered both of them using two different cases. And we will now try to fill the gaps. It becomes easy. And B6 is a male person. See, B6 we know is one of those brothers, male person. So let's mark B6. Are you able to follow this? So th this condition with respect to B6 is done now. B6 comes in the back row. So there were two possibilities. Both of those possibilities have been considered. Now, try to fill the gaps. What else do we know? We know that B2 and B4 will not come in the front row. So we should not fill B2 and B4 in these positions. Right? Anyway, that's not very uh, obvious. I mean, we cannot fix who comes there what we know is who cannot come there right so try to use other points now i think one of the statements said uh, the two brothers see both the brothers sit in the same column who are the two brothers b2 and b6 are the two brothers they are siblings right b2 b6 b4 all are siblings and b2 and b6 both are males so these are the two brothers yes or no the only two brothers in the family are b2 and b6 they have to come in the same column now that b6 position is already marked we can say b2 has to come here are you able to follow? B2 has to come they, in the same column. Both the brothers come in the same column. So B2 should either come here or in this position. Either in this position or in this position. But can B2 come here? No. See, clearly we know that B2 cannot sit in the front row. So the only choice is B2 has to come in this position. So both the brothers are in the same column. Right? We cannot take B2 in the first position, in, in the front row. Because it's not allowed. With respect to the second arrangement, B2 and B6 have to be in the same column. So the only choice for B2 is this one. So B2 is also fixed. B2 is also fixed. Right? So three persons have been plotted in both the cases. Now go to this point. The grandmother, granddaughter point. What did we know? That the granddaughter sits on the immediate left of grandmother. Where is that point? Yeah. See the granddaughter. The granddaughter. Who is the granddaughter? B5. Sits on the immediate left of the grandmother. Of her grandmother. So B5 sits on the immediate left of grandmother. Who is the grandmother? B7. Right? B7 is the grandmother. So B5 sits on the immediate left of the grandmother. 
So definitely B5, B7 will be together in the same row. See on the immediate left. So grandmother, granddaughter is on the immediate left, B5 and B7. Which means we need two consecutive positions for B5 and B7 in the same row. So if you look at the first case, the only possibility is B5 and B7 will take these two positions. So B5 and B7. Similarly, in the second case, the only possibility is B5 comes here and B7. Done. So I think done. In both the cases, we have done half of it. I mean, only two positions are left out now. So who are our marked? B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, right? B2, B3, B5, B6, B7. So B2, B3, B5, B6, B7. The left out persons are B4 and B1. Now we know B4 cannot come in the front row. See, already we have noted this. B4 cannot come in the front row. So B4 has to come here. Here B4 has to come here. So B4 is also marked. And B4, by the way, is a female person. And the other person is B1. So B1 comes in the front row. B1 is male or female? Male. B1 comes in the front row. Now the question that arises is, both the cases have been filled. Case 1 and case 2 both have been filled. So which of these two is correct? How do you decide which of these two is correct? Remember, there was one more condition. Not more than two males or two females can sit in the same row or same column. So check where is it uh, uh, you know, getting violated. I think in case 1, if you see, all the three persons in this column, B1, B2 and B6 are males. But you know that maximum there can be two males in a column. Here we have got all three males. So hence, first one is wrong. Check in second one. Second one obviously has to be correct. Is there any violation in second one? No. Two females, two females, two males. Right? Not more than two in any way, in, in any row or column. So I think, I mean, I'm sure that second one is the correct arrangement. Right? Let's, let's just highlight this in a green color box. So this is the correct arrangement. And the relationships are as taken up here. Alright, I hope all of you have followed this.